Attention, all money savvy viewers. Have you ever wondered if there's more to money than what meets the eye? Are you ready to uncover the hidden truths that banks don't want you to know? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to our groundbreaking video where we dive deep into the secrets surrounding the world of finance. In today's episode, we are going to expose the five truths about money that banks desperately try to keep hidden from the public eye. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest insights, tips, and strategies for mastering your finances. Banks serve as a fundamental support for an economy, and even the Federal Reserve functions as a bank with the unique ability to create money. However, what if I revealed to you that every bank has the potential to create money? In theory, anyone could establish a bank and initiate money creation. But there exists a simpler alternative. Why go through the costly process of starting a bank when you can launch a cryptocurrency and potentially become an overnight crypto billionaire? Surprisingly, this phenomenon has been occurring frequently. If you perceive cryptocurrencies as fraudulent, it may be because you lack comprehensive knowledge about the banking system. In this enlightening video, we will explore five hidden truths about money that banks deliberately conceal. The revelation of these truths has the potential to disrupt the banking system entirely. As Henry Ford once stated, it is fortunate that the general population lacks a deep understanding of our banking and monetary system. If they did, a revolution could erupt by tomorrow morning. Number 1. Investing your money in a traditional bank may not be as beneficial as it initially appears. Consider this. How much interest do you expect to earn by depositing your savings in a bank? At first glance, you might assume it would be a few percent for it to be worthwhile. However, the reality is quite different. Prominent banks like Citibank offer interest rates of less than 0.5%, and there are other banks with higher rates that fall below 1%. Let's pause and reflect on this. Your money grows by a mere 0.5%, while the inflation rate stands at 2.5%. Consequently, the actual value of your wealth decreases each year. It would be more advantageous to spend that money today rather than keep it in a bank. The purchasing power of your money in the future will be significantly lower than it is now. Additionally, during times of skyrocketing inflation, asset prices like homes and stocks can rise exponentially, as we have witnessed in the past year. Ultimately, a bank merely serves as a place to safeguard your money rather than generate significant returns. Number 2. Here's a revelation. Every bank has the power to create money seemingly out of thin air. You may find it hard to believe, as the Federal Reserve is the only institution authorized to create money, serving as a source of the dollar and having exclusive access to the printing machine. However, the banking system operates in a manner that allows every bank whether local or global, to create money to a certain extent based on the amount of money deposited by individuals. Let's say you deposit $1,000 into Bank A. What does the bank do with your money? It doesn't make sense for them to simply hold it, as they would not even be able to pay you the meager 0.5% interest. Instead, the bank lends your money to someone else who requires it for purchasing a car or a house, for instance and charges them interest which is often much higher than the interest they pay you. The average interest rate on credit cards, for example, is around 20%, significantly greater than what the bank offers. However, the bank won't inform you to whom they lend your money. Whenever you check your account balance, the bank will show that your money is still there and available for withdrawal. So if your money is still in the bank, where did they obtain the money to lend to someone else? This practice is known as fractional reserve banking. Banks are allowed to retain only 10% of the deposits and lend out the rest. For every $1,000 you deposit, the bank creates an additional $900 and lends it out, bringing the total to $1,900. The bank has effectively created $900 out of nothing more than the digital numbers in a computer system. 
Number three, you can earn money by borrowing money. In July 2012, Mark Zuckerberg financed his $5.95 million Palo Alto home that's three miles away from Facebook's headquarters with a 30-year mortgage. At the time, he was 28 years old and the world's 40th wealthiest person worth an estimated $15.6 billion. The question is, why would you get into debt when you have billions of dollars and can easily afford it? If you wanted, you could easily buy a dozen $6 million homes in cash without batting an eye. So why get a mortgage? The answer is, it's free money. Sounds unreal, I understand. Who would give you free money when you are already a billionaire? I mean, why would anyone give anyone else free money unless it's charity? It all has to do with interest rates. Remember when we talk about banks giving such a low ROI that it doesn't worth keeping your money there since it doesn't even beat inflation? So you are losing money? Well, in this scenario, it's the other way around. The inflation rate in the U.S. is 5 to 5.25%. So any money you borrow that is below the inflation rate is considered free money. Zuckerberg's mortgage rate was just a little over 1.05%. If you do the math, the bank is a loser since the mortgage rate is below the inflation. You don't have to be the genius to do the math. For the sake of example, let's say you borrow $1 million at the rate of 1.05%. The average rate of return on a savings account is 2.4% before the pandemic and now less than 1%, but let's just stick to 2.4%. Meaning that even if you deposit that million dollar in another bank, you end up making $24,000 a year while you only have to make a monthly payment of $10,500. That's 1.05% to the bank that lent you that money. Imagine if you do that with a hundred million dollars, or how about a billion dollars? When you can borrow for free, there's no point in tying up your own money when you can use that money for more profitable things. Of course, when we are talking about small amounts of money, this might not make sense because the difference isn't that big. However, when it comes to large sums, playing around one, two, or half a percent could potentially mean dozens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds. Number four, the wealthier you are, the more favorable terms you can expect when dealing with banks. It is important to remember that banks are not charitable organizations. They are profit-driven businesses with shareholders to whom they are accountable. Their primary goal is to maximize profits. And if their lending practices are not profitable, they won't survive. That's why they feel more comfortable lending money to wealthy individuals compared to those with less wealth. When you're a billionaire, for instance, the bank can rest assured that you are highly unlikely to default on your loan. And in the rare event that you face difficulties in making your monthly payments, you have the option to easily sell a portion of your business to repay the mortgage. This significantly reduces the risk for the bank when lending money to you, making it almost risk-free. This approach aligns with how the banking system has evolved over the centuries. Historically, banks would only engage with the nobility or individuals who possess substantial assets generating constant income, such as land. On the other hand, loaning money to an average employee who might fall ill, be unable to work, or lose their job carries a higher level of risk. While it's easy to criticize banks for this distinction, think about it from a personal perspective. Would you feel comfortable loaning money to a friend who struggles to make ends meet or a friend who has a thriving business? The answer is likely the latter, no matter how harsh it may sound. If you aspire to secure a lower mortgage rate, obtain better credit card terms, or enjoy improved borrowing conditions, you need to improve your financial situation first. Banks also offer lower mortgage rates as a means to establish strong relationships with wealthy individuals. By providing attractive terms, they aim to ensure that when these individuals require larger loans in the future, they will turn to the same bank. It is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Technological advancements like blockchain and cryptocurrencies hold promise in transforming 
and democratizing the banking industry to some extent. In fact, banking has already become more accessible to everyone compared to 100 years ago. However, the influence of wealth and financial status on obtaining favorable terms from banks is likely to persist, as banks continue to prioritize profit maximization and risk mitigation in their lending practices. Number 5. Credit cards can be likened to nuclear weapons in the hands of banks. The alarming truth is that 70% of Americans burdened with credit card debt admit they are unable to pay it off within the current year. This realization raises serious concerns. Unlike a mortgage with a relatively low interest rate, credit card debt often incurs exorbitant rates, averaging around 20%. If individuals are already struggling to meet their credit card debt obligations presently, it is unlikely that they will be able to do so in the future when the debt has significantly grown. In essence, this suggests that a significant portion of Americans, approximately 70%, is teetering on the edge of a debt trap. Additionally, over half of those surveyed, a staggering 56%, revealed that they have been grappling with credit card debt for at least a year. Moreover, the majority of these individuals anticipate carrying this burden for years to come. Nearly 20% estimate that it will take them more than three years to fully settle their debt, while approximately 8% confess to not knowing when they will be able to pay it off. This situation plays into the hands of banks who often amass substantial fortunes through such circumstances. Many individuals habitually spend without considering how they will repay their debts. They become accustomed to a particular standard of living and are determined to maintain it even if they cannot afford it. Consequently, banks persistently target consumers to entice them into acquiring new credit cards. Let me be clear. Responsible credit card usage can be beneficial for building one's credit score. However, if one lacks financial responsibility, succumbing to the debt trap should be avoided at all costs. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed learning about the incredible facts and stories we shared on our channel. If you're hungry for more amazing knowledge, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our latest videos. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and be amazed by the world around you.